Hi, my name is Nathan Miller. I'm a collaboration specialist with Microsoft, and today we're going to look at packaging and deploying applications using the new SharePoint 2013 application model. A SharePoint app is packaged up for deployment using a zip archive file known as an application package. The zip file format for packaging applications is created using the same open package convention format that's used in Word documents such as the DocX and the Excel workbooks. It's a requirement for the application package to contain an application manifest.xml file. This is what SharePoint uses to read the application metadata during the installation. The application package can and usually contains other files as needed for the application implementation. Note that the zip file for the application package for the SharePoint applications must have a file extension of a .app. In earlier betas, application packages were given file extensions such as .spapp instead of the .app, but in the final shipping version, a .app file extension is what we use. When it's time to build the application package for distribution, you can use the publish command, which is available in the menu command when you right-click a SharePoint application project in the Solution Explorer. This command allows you to select a location, such as a local hard drive, to write the new file, and this generates the .app package for you. It's important for developers to understand the contents of an application package file. The most important file in the, that is included in the application manifest is named the app manifest.xml. The application package in most cases will also contain an inner solution package. The inner solution package is a cab file with a .wspa file extension, which is the same exact file format as the solution packages you distribute for farm solutions and SharePoint sandbox solutions. The inner solution package is required to deploy site elements to the app web. The inner solution package contains exactly one web scope feature, which is what adds declarative elements to the app web when an app is installed. Remember that the inner solution package can contain declarative elements such as list, packages, CSS files, and JavaScript files. However, the inner solution package cannot contain DLLs or any .NET code whatsoever. Therefore, you can say that the inner solution package is constrained to be a fully declarative solution package. This is different than a solution package from Farm Solutions and Sandbox Solutions, which can contain DLLs assemblies with code written in C-sharp or VB.NET. Note that the applications can contain the following two types of elements that can be added to the host web as opposed to all other types of elements that are added to the app web. Client web parts and application custom actions. Client web parts allow you to add viewports into host webs via an iframe, which displays a page from either the web app or from a cloud-based application associated with the app. Client web parts are discovered and added to the pages in the host web app in the fashion which is very similar to adding a standard web part. App custom actions allow your app to add custom controls to the ribbon and custom menu items to the various menus such as the file item menu within a list. Note that the custom actions available to the apps are only a subset of the custom actions available when creating a sandbox solution or a farm solution. There's a more complete discussion of the client web parts and the app custom actions in later lectures. The following is a detailed walkthrough of what happens when you press the Control F5 keyboard combination. First, Visual Studio replaces the various tokens such as the tilde remote app URL token with the actual URL in the app manifest and other project files. Note that the app web URL token is not replaced in Visual Studio but instead by SharePoint during the app installation. Next, Visual Studio creates the application package and adds it to the app manifest file. The inner.wsp file and any files associated with the host web feature. Next, Visual Studio installs the application package using the SharePoint App Lifecycle API. Then Visual Studio updates the host file, aka the Elm host file, with a DNS entry setting on the local machine so that the newly established domain for the application is directed back to the local machine using the IP address of 127.0.0.1. Finally, Visual Studio launches the Internet Explorer and navigates to a specific page which allows you to begin testing your application. It's important to note that the location of the app start page affects the page Visual Studio directs you to. Visual Studio will take you directly to the start page if it exists in the application web, as was the case in the demo you just saw. However, if the start page is configured to point to an external page in a cloud-hosted app, then Visual Studio will direct you to a page in the host web with a launcher that you click to get to the start page. The only difference between starting an app with the Control F5 keyboard combination and starting an app by pressing F5 key has to do with whether or not you want the Visual Studio to attach to the JavaScript debugger. 
When you press F5 key without the control key, the Visual Studio attaches to the JavaScript debugger, which allows you a single step through to the JavaScript code inside your Visual Studio. Note that you can only attach to one JavaScript debugger at a time. Therefore, if you would like to single step through your JavaScript code using the Internet Explorer development tools, you should start the program using Control F5 instead of F5. Now let's take a look at the app package for a SharePoint application. We'll go ahead and create a simple application and publish it and upload it to our application catalog in our Office 365. So I'll go ahead and create a new project and we'll make this a SharePoint application. And so this application is going to go and get published to my Office 365 account. So I'll go ahead and hit SharePoint hosted application just to make this a very simple application. So it's creating the application it's asking me to log into Office 365 uh, to verify my app. Now my application has been created and let's pretend that we've gone through the effort of testing the application, deploying it, debugging it, and now we're satisfied with how the application functions in our test site. And what we want to do now is publish this application, create the app file, and give this to our administrator so that he can deploy it into our application catalog. So once we're done, what we end up doing is we go to the application and we'll go ahead and, and hit publish application. So when we hit the publish, uh, you see the summary screen where it's the application type is an app for SharePoint and the hosted type, this is a SharePoint hosted application. So once we actually publish this, uh, it'll open up the output file where we can actually grab that application file. So now you see my new app and it's a .app file. So these .app files are very similar to what we had in the past with the uh, .wsps, uh, they just also have the application manifest in them. And you can see that by copying this file and maybe renaming it to a .zip. So now I can open it up and I can see that I've got my WSP here. I've got my config. I also have an app manifest uh, that tells it all the permissions that this application, the SharePoint app needs uh, to request from SharePoint. Okay, so what I want to do is take my new app.app and I'm going to give it to my administrator to upload it to the app catalog. So over in SharePoint, uh, we're in Office 365 and I'll go into our, my apps panel. So in the apps panel, you'll see that um, it's got the application catalog. We also have a place where we can monitor apps and manage licenses. Uh, if I didn't have um, the application catalog created, it would prompt me to create an application catalog. In this case, I already have one created. And so you see in here, this is just a site collection. That's an application catalog site template. And I have apps for SharePoint, apps for Office. Um, so if I'm deploying Office um, applications for Outlook or for Word or Excel, I could do that in my corporate catalog as well. And I also have a place where users can request applications. Uh, so they can request it, we can approve it, and have kind of a, a process there for distributing application. So in this case, I've got my application file already made. Um, we've given it to the admin. He goes and heads and adds it over to our, um, our file. And so we've got now our app, my new app in my application catalog. And we can go ahead and look at and edit the properties of that if we wanted to. And so you see the short description. Maybe we add a description to it, uh, URLs, um, the category that might belong to, uh, the publisher, and any other types of metadata information that we need to add. Um, we could also make it a feature app so that it shows up in the noteworthy section as well. Okay, so now I've actually added the app. I've made some modifications to the metadata of that application. And now I can go back into my uh, central admin site and back into the applications, uh, we can also go into monitoring of the apps. So if I want to add my application to be monitored, I could go ahead and do that here. And so in this application monitor, just to kind of show you what that is, we see when I click on my application, I've got number of licenses, purchased, used, 
Uh, any fails that happen, so if it fails when a user installs it, fails if an upgrade happens, um, or any runtime errors occur, all those get logged. It also shows the number of launches and number of unique visitors uh, that are using that application. Uh, so that way we get a good idea of, of what type of usage the application is getting. So now that I've added my application into my catalog, I've added it to my monitoring, I can now go to the site um, as a user and actually deploy that application. So in my site, uh, I'll go to this department site and we'll go ahead and um, add an application to it. So you see that I've got my new application here, my new app. Um, I'll go ahead and click on that. And do I want to trust it? Yep, go ahead and trust it. And now we're able to add my new app to our site. So my new app's been uh, provisioned on our site. I can go ahead and click on this app and uh, run it. So now when I ran the app in our site, uh, the one that we've deployed, uh, you see it says, hello, Nathan Miller. Uh, it's got um, our app in there. And that's how you deploy an application to um, your corporate catalog, whether it's in Office 365 or whether you run it on SharePoint on-premise. In this section, we looked at how applications were published, how we do testing and debugging of applications, and we looked inside the app package to understand how the application package is assembled.